this kind of pageantry is what this country is known for. But I can't help remembering, of course I don't remember, but in terms of the pictures and the, and the history of what America went through when President Kennedy was assassinated and the, the tragedy and the grief and the incredibly choreographed, most beautiful funeral that was given in Washington. And we still have five more days of this. That is perhaps the most egregious example out of many, many examples that we went through of the American news media fawning over the queen, comparing the peaceful death of a 96-year-old with the assassination of a young president. What's more telling is that American media appears more choked up by the queen's death than the Brits do. As we told you last night, King Charles is gonna do some royal belt tightening. Well, it was up to the British newspaper to talk about it. The Guardian newspaper took him to task. Dozens of Clarence House staff, that's where he lived as prince, have been given notice of redundancies as the office of King Charles and the Queen Consort moved to Buckingham Palace after the death of the queen, the Guardian has learned. Up to 100 employees at the king's former official residence, including some who have worked there for decades, received notification that they would lose their jobs just as they were working around the clock to smooth his elevation to the throne. So he's firing people before he is burying his mother. You think that's discussed during the hours, excuse me, 10 days worth of live coverage on CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News? Of course not. It's about the, the brilliance of the queen and the royal family and how Prince Charles is going to move from being a climate active advocate to a climate ag ag advocate and world leader. At some level, the royal enthusiasts among American journalists kind of wish we had a monarchy. Thus, they can act like they, the journalists, are part of the aristocracy. See how happy they are? It brings them closer to what they believe they are, the aristocracy. Rob Lockwood's here, media strategist, former spokesperson for the Republican National Committee. Rob, uh, good to see you. Can you come up with any other explanation for why we spend so much time on this? Uh, no, a lot to unpack there. I think that one of the, the key words is pageantry. And for American elites, um, this is really, it's a high society Super Bowl. There's weeks of anticipation and lead up. And then they treat every single development as this breathtaking story that everybody has to know. And some are very serious. I mean, this is an important story. The queen is a is a historical figure. You know, her, her reign began in, when uh, Winston Churchill was a prime minister, I think, right? Or right around his era. Mm -hmm. People are, you know, Churchill, somebody you and I read about in the history book. So there's there's a time and place to understand her historical impact, the significance, and what it means to the United Kingdom. Um, but I think the American media has gone completely overboard and they treat, and that's because they treat funerals uh, as society events and they'll, they'll focus on who's there, who got to sit next to who, uh, you know, what- Right, what you know, was, it, what, what's stunning to me yeah. is how journalists who, who claim they are real journalists and are, are ready to take, uh, American politicians or certain American politicians to task just totally lose it. Any sense of, of journalism, of, of asking a tough question, of talking about both sides of a story when it comes to the royals. For example, Don Lem Lemon, take a listen. It is a stunning day. So many striking and moving images, Anderson, including King Charles, his siblings, and his sons escorting their mother, their grandmother, their queen. The grief and the sense of duty really etched on their faces. Is there a sense of wishing we had a monarchy so they could be part of an aristocracy? Yeah, and I mean, just the clip right there, there's so many things going on in America <laughs> that are more important to Americans, right? I know that some of your previous guests may have said the border is secure or, you know, that the economy is doing well. They're having a party at the White House. The trains are still running on time today, maybe not so tomorrow, but they're talking about on that channel you just showed uh, the grief on their face. Of course, there's grief. The grandmother died. I mean, you've been to funerals. I've been to funerals. Everybody watching has been to a funeral. It's a time for grieving. Why is it a surprise that Harry or William have sorrow or that they're mourning? Of course they are. But that's what the American newscasters are choosing to waste valuable time on. You know, not the legacy, not, not important things that she accomplished, but that her grandchildren are grieving her. Yeah, okay, we, we get it. Right, no, and that, right. And then the, the, 
the diff, you know, the sort of the inner feuds between them and on and on and on. Uh, but right. the, it also loses any sense of sort of who these people really are. And you pointed this out from the New York Post, uh, the Queen's old butler talking about now King Charles. His pajamas are pressed every morning. His shoelaces are pressed flat with an iron. The bath plug has to be in certain position. The water temperature has to be just tepid in a bathtub filled only half full. The king even has his valet squeeze one inch of toothpaste onto his toothbrush every morning. That's from the New York Post. You're never going to hear about that uh, on television. You just hear about how uh, Charles is now becoming the king of all and how he's going to try and, and bring a life of service. I, I'm wondering why, why American journalists forget their journalists when it comes to the royal family. Well, I think a few things. There's also a great line about him using some like super soft velvety toilet paper or whatever. I mean, the guy <laughs> is completely pampered. Um, and I think that when you look at what's what's happened, I mean, the queen is 96, right? With the media over there, um, the royal family has had a good messaging operation. You know, they always have been able to to spin the news in their favor, and that's partly because the queen was a revered figure, uh, as a historical figure in a way that the the new king is not. And I think the American media, when they're the New York Post, who's running that story, and uh, there was a commentary I was reading today on Barstool Sports by my friend Jerry Thornton, who was ridiculing it, and that's because it's ripe for yeah. ridicule. It's deserved of ridicule. When some people are putting toothpaste on your toothbrush. Yeah, so the fact that the American media aren't talking about that is probably because they're in mourning themselves. They realize that this, the Queen's funeral may be the last of this era because she was, like I said, a historic and a revered figure at a time when royalty mattered. And now the king, he's just a celebrity. I mean, yeah, right, the, no, a see, lot of a, the kids, they're point. just celebrities. Yeah, it's, it's a great point. Hard, hard to imagine that Jerry Thornton of Barstool Sports is the one sort of, uh, of showing up journalists who, if there's any group of people who should hate the idea of an ingrained aristocracy in a monarchy, it would be real journalists. Um, wanted, wanted Barstool, and then we obviously have our examples uh, on cable news. Rob, it's good to see you. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.